What really happened the day music died? We're on the Weird History Channel. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome back. Appreciate you guys coming over. Going to check this video out, man. Hey, shout out to all the good humans. Appreciate all the love and support. For those who are asking, the link is in the description. So we ain't going to waste no more time. Let's jump right into it. February 3rd, 1959, three musicians, Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, J.P. Richardson, known best at the time as the Big Bopper, on the cusp of rock and roll legend, hopped on a chartered plane in an effort to avoid a hellish bus ride through a brutal Midwestern snowstorm. Within minutes after takeoff, the airplane crashed, killing everyone on board and changing the timeline of pop music forever. Today, we're going to find out what actually happened the day the music oh. died. Wait, this is, this is, uh, the movie La, La, Bam, La Bamba? I, I need to rewatch that because I, it's like I remember it, but I don't. You know what I mean? Especially now that I'm doing music reactions. What's his name? Uh, Richie, Richie Valens. Bring everyone on board and changing the timeline of pop music forever. Today, we're going to find out what actually happened the day the music died. Actually, but before we get started, take a second to subscribe to the Weird History channel and let us know what musical stories you would like to hear about. Now, on to the early morning of February 3rd, 1959 in Clear Lake, Iowa. 59. Mm. The Winter Dance Party Tour, headlined by Buddy Holly, who had recently broke away from his band, The Crickets, was seemingly doomed from the very beginning. It started on January 23, 1959 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and zigzagged through Iowa and Minnesota with absolutely no regard for logistics. Bill Griggs, a Buddy Holly historian, said, They didn't care. It was like they threw darts at a map. The Damn. tour from hell. That's what they named it. And wow. It's not a bad name. To add to the crappy conditions, the musicians were forced to travel on reconditioned school buses, not good enough for school kids, according to Griggs. The buses were unheated, and driving through the bitterly cold winters of Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Iowa over icy roads took its toll on the vehicles and its passengers. Griggs estimates that five separate buses were used in the first 11 days of the tour. Holly's guitarist on the tour, Tommy Alsop, remembers driving through Wisconsin. We had started up this incline. It was snowing real bad, and the bus just started going slower and slower. Hey. And the lights got dimmer and dimmer, and all of a sudden the bus stopped. The driver said, the bus is frozen. The musicians huddled together under blankets, burned newspapers in the aisle of the bus, wow. drank shots, and told each other stories. It was so cold, Holly's drummer Carl Bunch suffered frostbite in his feet and Damn. subsequently missed the next tour date, Holly's last. These hellish travel conditions would be what drove Holly to chartering an airplane on the night of February 3rd. Frostbite? Oh, that is crazy. For more than a week, Holly, Richardson, Valens, and the rest of the musicians on the tour traveled around the upper Midwest in a bus, facing one challenge after another. The consensus was that everyone on the bus was growing tired and bitter due to the bad conditions. Not having any clean clothes didn't help matters. Part of the reason why Holly suggested skipping the bus ride after their Fargo, North Dakota gig to Moorhead, Minnesota, was because he wanted to wash his clothes. Mm. He figured the 400-mile flight from Fargo to Moorhead would buy him some spare time to do laundry and sleep before having to take the stage the following day. The other musicians agreed, and Valens, Richardson, and Holly took everyone's dirty laundry on board with them when they set off from the airport. Richie Valens wasn't originally supposed to board Holly's chartered plane. Holly offered one of the two spare seats to Dion DiMucci of Dion yeah. and the Belmonts, the opener on the tour. The flight cost Holly $108, so he offered Dion a spot on the plane for $36, a third of the price. Man. Dion remembers the $36 offer because it was a significant amount of money to him. When Buddy said, that will be $36, he hit the magic number in my head. The rent for my parents' apartment was $36. Damn. And they argued all my f***ing life over that $36 because my father was a beautiful guy, but he was an emotional 13-year-old, and he never worked. Ultimately, Dion thought the $36 fare, which was equivalent to well over $300 today, was Man. too big of an expense to justify, so he passed on Holly's offer. Holly then asked his two bandmates if they wanted the seats. Guitarist Tommy Alsup and bassist Waylon Jennings were all set to make the flight, 
but things changed when Richardson's flu, which he'd been battling for days, got worse. Jennings graciously gave the ailing Big Bopper his seat. Valens, who famously hated airplanes, was fighting a bad cold himself and asked Alsup for the other seat. Alsup still remembers the exchange he had with Valens after the singer said, Are you going to... The fact that he hated airplanes... I hate flying as well. Y'all know that. For those of you who don't, I hate it. I honestly don't know the next time I'm getting on one. Bad cold himself and asked Alsup for the other seat. Alsup still remembers the exchange he had with Valens after the singer said, Are you going to let me fly, guy? Alsup said, No, let's flip a coin for it. I don't know why I said we should flip for it because I'd been telling him no all evening. But I pulled a half dollar out of my pocket. I've never understood what made me. It just happened. I flipped the 50 cent piece and said, call it. Richie said, heads. And it came down heads. Before he became an outlaw country music badass, Waylon Jennings played bass for Holly. When Holly told Jennings he had reserved one of the seats for him, the future bad boy of country music offered his spot to the big bopper, who had been fighting a savage flu throughout a good portion of the tour. Holly found it funny that Jennings was going to spend another cold night traveling on the road in a tour bus and told him, I hope your damn bus freezes up again. Jennings responded with a zinger of his own, saying, Well, I hope your old plane crashes. Oh. Those words came to haunt Jennings. God almighty, for years I thought I caused the crash. Oh. February 2nd, 1959 marked the 11th stop of the tour at the Surf Ballroom in Clear Lake, Iowa, but it should be pointed out that this date wasn't even on the original tour itinerary. The second was supposed to be a day off for the musicians, but the tour's booker called ahead and found a venue to accommodate the lineup. After all, a day off meant no earnings. The musicians performed two sets at the Surf Ballroom, the last of which ended around midnight. After the sets, a small group of fans followed Holly, Valens, and Richardson to the airport and waved as the three men boarded the plane. As snow blew through the air, the small four-seat Beechcraft Bonanza took off just after 12.30 a.m. on February 3rd. According to the Civil Aeronautics Board's report, the aircraft took off toward the south in a normal manner. After flying approximately five miles, witnesses back at the airport saw the plane's taillight slowly descending before completely disappearing. Radio contact with the aircraft disappeared as well. Aerial searches conducted the next morning found the plane in a snow-covered farm field. Jeez, man. With no witnesses, it's difficult to say exactly what happened to the plane carrying Valens, Richardson, Holly, and Peterson. But experts estimate it hit the ground at more than 170 miles per hour. Uh. Authorities believe the tip of the right wing was the first part to make contact with the ground, and all three musicians were thrown from the craft as it flipped over and tore apart, before coming to stop against a barbed wire fence. Holly and Valens were each found about 17 feet from the plane, while authorities discovered Richardson around 40 feet away. Peterson became tangled in the plane, and police found him inside the fuselage. The event was so extreme, recovery crews discovered pieces of the airplane as far as 540 feet away. Damn. Although bad weather kept authorities from reaching the aircraft and its passengers for 10 hours, coroners believed all four men perished upon impact. The official report by the Civil Aeronautics Board concluded that Roger Peterson, the 21-year-old pilot, was too inexperienced to be flying in a snowstorm. Peterson had logged 711 flying hours and had been flying for over four years. But since the plane showed neither the engine nor other aircraft mechanics malfunctioned and the landing gear was still in the up position, officials said Peterson's lack of experience flying in snowy weather caused the crash. They also found no evidence anyone told Peterson about two flash advisories issued oh, by the U.S. Weather Bureau no. that morning regarding an incoming blizzard that would greatly reduce visibility. Although a seasoned pilot could successfully fly through this situation, they would need to rely on their instrumentation to navigate since they wouldn't be able to see the horizon line out the window. Ultimately, the Civil Aeronautics Board concluded that Peterson didn't have enough experience flying in this manner. It's also possible he may have become confused at the plane's gyroscope, which operated in the opposite way of other planes he piloted, meaning Peterson may have believed he was ascending but was actually flying the plane towards the ground. 
What do you think might have happened to the future of rock and roll had Holly never chartered that airplane? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other music stories from our weird history. You know, I don't know too much about Buddy Holly, or or I just, you know, I've I, I seen that... Um, I seen that La La Bamba movie, but I, I I I feel like I need to watch it again. But um, I think you guys mentioned something about Buddy Holly having such a short career, but everything like that he was putting out was like he was on you know the path to just having a great career, like. He had like top songs. People don't really talk about Richie Valens that much. Um, as far as I don't think I have one reaction up to him. I think like when I watch movies or, or when I watched movies when I was young, I always thought the people who died in the movie died in real life. Like what's his name? Lou... Uh, You know, the guy who played the lead character, who played Richie. I always thought he died in real life. I used to get so attached to movies because I was young and didn't really understand. I'm like, damn, this dude just, you know what I mean? They do such a good job acting. But this, you know, rest in peace to all of them. But I had no clue that this is how it happened. Because there's been so many greats that have been involved in uh plane crashes man wow a lot of information there um i'm pretty sure most of you knew but for those who didn't now you know and and thank y'all for watching along with me man um but yeah we're gonna stop the video right there hope you guys uh I don't even know if enjoyed is a good word, but appreciate y'all coming over, man. Peace out.